Recently on Outside Extra, we inspected some elaborate acronyms. Abbreviations where the first letter of each word is used to make a new word that their creators clearly worked backwards from. How else does the name of Morgan Mew's sticky phone gun just happen to spell glue, eh? Reply to my emails, Bethesda. We then asked if you could think of any more examples, and by golly did you deliver, pouring forth a veritable alphabet soup of tortured acronyms that can only possibly exist because games makers thought they sounded cool or to squeeze in some little joke. Those rascals. Here then are even more acronyms so twisted that you could put a hose at the top and make a pretty decent water slide. The best and some might say only thing about an acronym is how it condenses a lot of words into just a few letters, which in itself may be also a word. This one seems to be alive. What a lucky guy. At least death would have saved him from the dreams. So we guess that's what's going on with the acronym S-T-A-L-K-E-R in the game S-T-A-L-K-E-R Shadow of Chernobyl, in which you wake up with no memories and a hot new tattoo. <laughs> oh, if I had a nickel every time that happened. I still wouldn't have enough for the laser removal surgery. But it is hard to say for sure. Yes, your amnesiac player character has the game name tattooed on his right arm, and it's not just because he's hashtag living the brand. <laughs> In this game world, the term stalker is the government term for anyone residing illegally in the exclusion zone around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, where everything is bad and wrong thanks to a second meltdown that took place in this alternate reality. However, the all caps abbreviation STALKER as tattooed on the protagonist is not just the same as the government term stalker. The mysterious STALKER TAT, also known as The Mark, has a greater significance. It's not as if every two bit looting and smuggling stalker in the wasteland has one of these. As noted by commenter Kirk J. Zaraf, stalker stands for scavengers, trespassers, adventurers, loners, killers, explorers, robbers. We've been called all of these and more. But as Kirk notes, that's only a supposition. The best acronyms are the ones that no one knows for certain, such as life in the zone. It's true that ambiguous acronyms are just one of the horrors that comes with living in an irradiated wasteland. Because although you might hope all would be revealed at the end of the game when you finally face off with the entity known as the Sea Consciousness, which has been behind everything from the creation of the zone to your sweet tattoo, the Sea Consciousness dodges the question harder than a campaigning politician. Stalker is a coded acronym, which we use to mark agents programmed for particular missions. Aha! Uh -huh. Your mission as our agent was to kill Strelak and his group. Yeah, but coming back to Stalker... They got too close to finding out things they shouldn't know. And Stalker stands for... We created a network of psi fields on the way to the zone center in order to recruit agents. You know one of these fields by the name of Brain Scorcher. Oh my god, well, at least I can remember what my latest ink stands for. Sometimes acronyms look cool. Oh, I forgot. How is work? Everything okay? Hmm. Gillian, what is it? What's wrong? Jamie, I've become a junker. A junker? Gillian, but why? Jamie, you know why. It's the only way we can regain our lost memories. When a breed of sinister robots is killing people and taking their places, your primary concerns should be, one, what kick-ass name can we give the anti-robot task force? And two, does anyone realize that I'm one of those robots? Wait, I've said too much. <clears throat> Back to the anti-robot task force thing. When it comes to dismantling a breed of robots in the cyberpunk future, you could surely do a lot worse than the acronym name Junker, right? As commenter Eric the Kai recalled, saying, Junker from the Snatcher games on the Sega CD comes to mind. It's the acronym for what your character does for a living. That character is amnesiac detective Gillian Seed, who, in Hideo Kojima's Blade Runner-inspired game Snatcher, signs up with Junker Squad in the hope of recovering his lost memories. This is the kind of motivation it's probably best not to mention in the job interview. Any sign yet that your memory's coming back? I'm afraid not. I still can't remember a thing from before the army picked me up three years ago. 
Gillian's trench coat game might be on point, but his wisdom when it comes to uncovering his past is somewhat shakier. After all, who could possibly hope to get anything straightened out by an organization whose name stands for Japanese Undercover Neurokinetic Elimination Ranger, which is exactly the kind of pitiful human word garbage that I, as a regular human, have no problem with. There's no point trying to figure out what exactly a neurokinetic elimination ranger is, or for that matter how undercover the junker operatives really are, bearing in mind they have their name in big letters on the door and operate out of a giant floodlit skyscraper. <laughs> Junkers? More like jokers! <laughs> Just a little joke there, something that artificial minds famously struggle with, so please factor that into your ongoing assessment of whether or not I am human. You can do it. There you go. My goodness, just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Some acronyms think they're so clever. One that clearly thinks it's all that was pointed out by commenter Winston Owl. How about Fallout's special? That was pretty good. Winston is right, to be honest. Special is pretty good. A staple in the Fallout series, the special system helps determine your character's basic stats at the beginning of each game. And these statistics are strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. See, pretty decent. In order to determine your special stats, you'll often have a little interview from a helpful NPC, such as your saviour in Fallout New Vegas, or the vault Tech salesman in Fallout 4. Splendid! Splendid! Now, uh, <clears throat> let's see... There was a particularly excellent application of choosing your specials in Fallout 3, when as a baby your character stumbles across a vault Tech special picture book for kids. As you turn the pages, you decide your character's skills and abilities, which is honestly a pretty big ask of a baby. Oh, why do I have really high charisma but low intelligence? Well, let me tell you this, you wonderful people. See, when I was a baby, I read this, I want to say, book? At least you do get another chance later on as a young adult when you take a test to determine the best job for you. This is known as the Generalized Occupational Aptitude Test, or GOAT for short. Not sure what GOAT has to do with my job, but whatever. You'll see. Don't forget to hand in your test before you leave. You don't want to know what happens to people who fail the GOAT. Nothing is better than going to extreme lengths for a really dumb joke, like that time I flew my helicopter up to Everest base camp with amusing results. Yeah, um, Luke, I'm really sorry but about this cutaway gag. We've been looking into the cost of it and like budget-wise, it's just, I mean, the oxygen canisters alone are going to cost tens of thousands. All I'm hearing are excuses. A really dumb joke is exactly where the makers of 2013's Metal Gear Rising Revengeance put their acronym efforts, as noted by commenter Pablo Rojas, who recalled, What about the D-O-O-M-P from Metal Gear Rising? Even Raiden has a hard time with that. Raiden's not the only one struggling to wrap his head around that peculiar acronym, which we may as well tell you now stands for Digital Optical Output Mounted Proxy, which I think means that Raiden is trying to log into the Netflix of another country? It really doesn't matter what it means because the makers of this game don't give two hoots about what the words in the acronym are. They only care about how it sounds when German scientist Wilhelm Dr. Voigt abbreviates it. But first you need to take a dump. I... wait, what? A dump? A digital optical output mounted proxy. You'll need one to interface with the terminal. Oh, now we get it. Come on, Metal Gear, why do you always have to lower the tone? There is another solution. A way to stop Saren that does not require fleets or armies. No, it's too soon. Humanity is not ready for the responsibilities that come with joining the Spectres. Backronym is when an acronym is deliberately formed from a phrase whose initial letters spell out a particular word. So basically all the acronyms we've been going on about so far. You don't have to send a fleet into the Traverse, and the Ambassador gets his human Spectre. Everybody's happy. Among the finest of all the video game backronyms, though, is Mass Effect backronym Spectre, suggested by commenter Jabogas, who says, 
Well, there's SPECTRE, Special Tactics and Recon in Mass Effect, whose acronym is so painful everyone just spells it as SPECTRE. To recap, that's Special Tactics and Recon, which, I mean, come on the council, you can't just pick and choose which multiple letters you use from each word to make up your backronym. Commander Shepard, step forward. It is the decision of the Council that you be granted all the powers and privileges of the Special Tactics and Reconnaissance Branch of the Citadel. Spectres are hand-picked elite agents empowered by the Citadel Council with exceptional authority because they're really good at doing stuff. And if you know your galactic history, you'll remember Commander Shepard became the first ever human Spectre in 2183. Spectres are not trained, but chosen. Individuals forged in the fire of service and battle. Those whose actions elevate them above the rank and file. To be fair to the Citadel Council, they probably just wanted to make their best agents sound like cool ghosts. And they are no more ridiculous than the club of baddies known as Spectre in James Bond, whose backronym stands for Special Executive for Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge, Extortion because I guess they wanted to be upfront about their criminal intent and also have something cool to put on their business cards. Hey, whatever, Blofeld, you do you. But coming back to Mass Effect, the really curious thing about Spectre is that in this universe, the clever backronym only works in the human language of English, where Spectre means spooky ghost. It doesn't work in any of the many alien languages to which Spectre might be translated by everyone's implanted universal translators. Unless each race has its own cool-sounding backronym equivalent for Spectres in its native language, because the acronym translation is in fact also a semantic localization, Which makes sense, because by that point in the future, computer-aided translation would be sufficiently advanced for semantic localization. And why would the Citadel Council even name Spectres in English when all all humans are basically looked down on in galactic civilization anyway, and there wasn't even a human spectre for ages. The spectres okay. were formed well before. Okay. No, I have more Mass Effect. I know. No, this, you're a nerd. Being a surgeon is gruelling enough. The hours are long, and everyone's always on at you about washing your hands. I mean, like, come on, geez, I just washed them yesterday. Yes, medical professionals have enough on their plates already without enduring humanity's very worst acronyms. And yet, commenter Nintendo Cat knows there is no respite for our brave doctors and nurses, noting, What about the Trauma Center series? Indeed, the Scalpel Em Up series, which began with 2005's Under the Knife for Nintendo DS, follows a fight against a deadly terrorist man made disease that's extremely tough to fight, officially dubbed Guilt. This deadly artificial guilt toxin comes in eight horrible strains, including one that infects the patients with tiny blue bugs that pop out of your wounds and have to be lasered to death. A pretty horrible disease then, but certainly one with a cool name. Could that be coincidence? Let's have Dr. Mike explain in his best bedside manner. I'm terribly sorry to inform you, but you've got gangliated eutrophin Immunolatency toxin? What does that mean? Seven years of medical training and I've no idea. Honestly, what on earth that arrangement of vaguely medical sounding terms could possibly mean is beyond us, but then, hey, we're not doctors. The good news is that with the right tools and an almost supernatural healing ability, the guilt disease can be defeated. Unlike the regular kind of guilt where you accidentally drop your Tamagotchi into an open rib cage and the medical school is all blah blah blah, expelled, blah blah blah, get a job on YouTube. Sorry, what were we talking about? Prepare to attack. Select your hero. Why do scientists and engineers have to get all clever when naming their robots? Why can't they just call them... Dave? One robotic fighting machine with a ridiculous acronym in Blizzard's popular shooter was pointed out by commenter Stu Mungus, who said, What about the mecha acronym on Diva's mech in Overwatch? Indeed, cool fan fave tank character D.Va fights her enemies in an equally cool mech suit. The South Korean pro gamer was recruited to fight in this mech because of her pro gaming skills, which she brings to bear on the battlefield. The suit is a hugely sophisticated system that lets D.Va shoot and plow mech first into her enemies. Plus, her special move is to have the mech self-destruct and call in a replacement later, which must be really annoying for all the people who do her custom paint jobs. Oh, 
diva, I just finished that one yesterday. But what's more annoying than her blowing them up every five minutes is that they're actually called Mecha, spelt M-E-K-A. This stands for Mobile Exoforce of the Korean Army. Yeah, I think you've uh, missed out some letters there, mate. This is probably for the best, though, as Stumungus pointed out. Otherwise, it'd be Mifotka, which sounds like an appetizer at a Greek restaurant. You know, I heard it goes great with halloumi. So those were even more acronyms that they clearly worked backwards from. I mean, oh my goodness, what were some of those about? But the only acronym that you need to worry about now is subscribe, which stands for seriously, you better subscribe. Crime. And that's what it stands for. And uh, once, you've, <laughs> once you've done that and subscribed, then uh, why not check out these two videos? Because they're great. You won't regret it, I promise. And hey, it's the S-U-B-S. C R I I orb right here. So you better click that as well and see what happens. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Goodbye.